Hi, this is Laura. Welcome to In the Kitchen with Laura. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, a appliance that we get a lot of questions on, the Instant Pot. I have my Instant Pot right here. This big buddy of mine gets me through a lot of busy days. So we're going to talk about some of the features that this has um, and all the parts. So this is the base of the Instapot. And on it, you have all of your controls. And when you look at your controls, most of them are for pressure cooking. So you can manually set your pressure cook here and then your up and down buttons for the number of minutes that you need. You can also do uh, use any of these presets, which come in handy for rice. I would not make rice any other way, but with a preset. Um, bean, uh, I, I think I've used all of these at some point, maybe not porridge or stew, but I've definitely used most of them. So um, uh, let's see what else. This is not just a pressure cooker, it's also a slow cooker. It has a lot of different features. So you can look into your manual and see which features your Instapot has. I have used the slow cooker feature and it is a great one as well. So inside you're gonna see that is your element. That's what gets hot. So this you do not want to put in the dishwasher or get wet. You just wanna wipe it with um, a damp cloth. Now, the lid. This is the lid to the Instapot. Um, as you can see, people think it's pretty complicated and scary. Pressure cookers used to be very dangerous. These are very safe. So as you see, I'm gonna show you what most people don't know. This seal pulls right out like that. And every time you use your Instapot, if you take your seal, pull it out, put it in the top rack of the dishwasher, it is top rack dishwasher safe. So you can put it in there and it will keep it from getting that smell that people talk about. Um, and then before you use your pressure cooker again, you just pop that back into place. And the lid will not close if it's not popped in there correctly. So you just sort of have to work it in underneath. There's a little bar that you work it underneath. You just like run your fingers around the edge and um, put that back in. So really very easy to, this whole lid comes apart. People don't realize that. And there are gonna be times when you may have to take it apart. I uh, made applesauce at one point. And while making that applesauce, a lot of the foam got up into the workings of the lid. And I had to take my lid completely apart and get all that sticky stuff out of there. Um, so this pops off, this vent, it comes off. It's a little tricky to get off, but it does come off. It just pulls right out. So if you ever you get anything stuck in that vent, you are going to want to take this apart on occasion, every so often, depending on how often you use it, and clean that out. This, and that's the, the bottom of the vent, which is the, the knob right there. Um, the other uh, part here is the pressure gauge. See, the pressure gauge, when I touch it, I can push it out. That's how I know when my pot is pressurized. There is a tiny little silicone seal on the back. If you take that silicone seal off, this comes right out. It's really not very complicated. So you can, you can take this whole thing apart and clean it. Sometimes it's easier, honestly, to get this one off once you have that one off. Um, I can, this one's giving me a bit of a hard time. It's twisting around, but it doesn't want to come off for me and I don't want to like yank it. Although it doesn't hurt it to yank it. I just don't think it's a good idea. So I might drop the, my lid because I'm doing it at a funny angle. So I'm putting my little seal back on my pressure gauge and I can see it still goes up and down the way it should. Now let's talk about your, your vent. The vent just pops right off. 
People don't realize that it just pops right off. It's supposed to pop off. It's not broken. It's not affecting your Instapot in any way. So sometimes if you've gotten crud in there, um, you're going to want to clean that out and clean your vent. So pop that vent right back on. And on the top, you should notice that there is a, a seal setting and a venting setting. When you are pressure cooking, you always want this to be on the seal setting because that is how you're creating pressure inside your pressure um, Instapot to cook. Your venting setting is what you want to use when you are using your slow cooker feature. So those are the two uh, features, um, or those are the two things you need to know about your vent. A lot of times people will say my Instapot doesn't work and it's often because their vent is not in the sealing position, it's in the venting position. Okay, so as you can see, I've plugged my Instapot in and it's currently showing that it's in, in the off position. So here's a little handy trick. A lot of it, in order to pressurize your Instapot, um, a lot of people say, oh, it takes just as long to pressurize. Well, it does. But one of the things that I can tell you is that uh, there's a trick to getting it to heat up faster and um, it uses less energy uh, that you would on the stove. And ultimately it does cook more thoroughly and faster. Um, but it does take a little bit of time to warm up. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my inner pot in. Um, to my Instapot, just like that. And I hit my button in the back. That's why it thinks I closed it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit saute. Now, the recipe that we're making is um, a chicken and rice soup recipe. So it needs the saute feature anyway. So now it's sauteing and it's on. I don't even worry about how hot it's gotten, but you can leave your, you know, if you need this to, to like braise your meat before or sear your meat before you cook it like a roast, you can heat this up, put some oil in it, and then do that right in the Instapot. That way you will not, um, you won't have to use another, another pan. So this is on the saute setting. And the first thing I'm going to do is put about a tablespoon of oil in here. Pop that right in. And what this is going to do, so even if you are just using this to cook something that doesn't need to be se um, seared or sauteed, I would turn it on anyway. Before you get started, as you're getting your ingredients together, Turn that on because it's going to give your Instapot a warm up. So everything and make sure that everything that you put into it is room temperature so that you don't have to wait around for everything to get hot so that it can create that steam. So um, the first thing I'm going to put into my Instapot are the onions. I've already cut those up. Put those in there. And a uh, spoon. Uh, stir those around a little and save the oil. And I'm going to put celery in. So I have my celery. And I'm going to put my carrots in. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you, let me teach you about the features of your Instapot while we're making something to show you how quick it can be done. So I'm going to, these don't really need to be sauteed all that much, but the recipe does say saute it. It's not going to make a huge difference to the cook in the end. It will be cooked either way. So if you just want to throw everything in there and get going, that's fine too. And the other thing that I'm putting in are the spices, which is thyme. And let's see, what were they? Let me grab my recipe. The spices were, let's see, uh, bay leaves, thyme, parsley, salt, and pepper. So that's what's in here. I'm take my bay leaves and pop them in there. Put my spices in there. Give it a, give it a stir. Um, 
So what we are doing, we're making chicken and rice soup here. Um, you can sort of hear it. I can already start to hear this um, sauteing going on. It's starting to get hot. Um, and what we're doing first is we're cooking our chicken. And then we will put the rice in afterwards. And I will show you how you can let that cook. You don't have to repressurize. So you're cooking your chicken first. Now, when you cook the chicken, there's a great thing about the Instapot, and I'm sure you've heard that people say you can cook with um, frozen meat, and you can. So if you're cooking with frozen meat in these vegetables, you want to increase your pressure time from seven minutes to 12 minutes for frozen. If it's not frozen, seven minutes is sufficient. You're also gonna let it natural release. So you're gonna let the steam naturally release down and out of the pressure cooker, or you can do a quick release. On some recipes, we'll call for quick release and that, that is when you let the, the steam out as soon as the timer goes off. But for this, we're gonna natural release. It's going to take seven minutes once it's pressurized. And um, I, I love that I can throw frozen chicken in there. So now I'm going to, Sorry, we're gonna get some sizzle here. We're gonna put my chicken in. And I don't need to do anything to the chicken. I just pop that right in on top of those vegetables. Easy peasy. And just that. And now I'm going to, I have eight cups of chicken broth here. I am going to put about six, six of the cups in. Um, and actually this is six cups of chicken broth. So, and I'm gonna put all six in. And then I can tap and top it off at the end with another couple of cups if I need to after we've done the rest. Um, depending on how soupy you want your soup. So I'm gonna pour this in. Okay. And now for the magic. Here's where the magic happens. So we're gonna, if you put your Instapot lid on, if you put it in between the handle, which by the way, the handle also holds the lid. Awesome. In between the handle and the back of the pot, you will automatically hit that magic spot where your lid automatically goes on. There you go. You're gonna make sure your pressure gauge is on, um, is on seal. So you're gonna seal it. You don't want it to bend. And we're going to, let me go down here now. We're going to, turn it off of saute. So we're gonna cancel that and we're gonna pressure cook for seven minutes. Now this is going to have to reach its full pressure first, which can take up to 10 minutes. Um, but let's talk a little bit about some of the timing that can happen with the Instapot. You can, let's see, you can make beef stew in 25 minutes. And when you make it, you want it to naturally release. Most of the meat is natural release and most of the recipes will tell you, but there are charts online that will also list and tell you. I have them here and I will put them on our Facebook page in the comments. I can copy and paste to the links. Um, so you can do a roast in 25 minutes. Like I said, if you are gonna cook from frozen, I wouldn't do a roast frozen unless you, if you want it to cook more quickly, chunk it up. Sometimes I'll take a big roast and I'll cut it into four or five chunks and then put it in there. Um, chicken breast, it says five to eight minutes. We're doing ours on six. That's fine. Right in the middle there. Uh, it says you could do a whole chicken in eight minutes. A whole chicken in eight minutes. And it will come out like this chicken's going to come out shreddable. So all I'm going to have to do is take two forks and sort of shred it and throw it back in. Or if I wanted it uh, cubed, I could cube it instead. Um, but either way, it's super tender and easy to work with. Um, but there are, you can also do beans. I love doing fresh beans, or uh, not fresh beans, but uh, dried beans in my Instapot. 
um, take very little time. They, they take about 30 minutes at the most to do dried beans, which can take all day. And the thing about that makes the beans go even faster and better is that is if you take them and soak them for at least an hour before you stick them in the Instapot. Um, that way, if you don't, they stay sort of small. All you're doing when you soak them is helping them absorb some more water and um, just plump up a little more. But you don't have to, you can just throw them in with the 30 minutes, go and you're done. So that's great. So you can do that. What I do sometimes is I will put the beans in and cook them. And then once it's done, I'll put it on saute and throw all the other stuff for chili in with the beans and um, make one, make it all in one pot. So uh, that's easy peasy. Things like uh, pasta you can do in, let's see, this says mac and cheese can be in four minutes and you can. Um, rice, bright rice, white rice is three minutes with a natural uh, pressuring, de depressurizing and brown rice, it says 20 to 25. That I would, yeah, I would do that and see how it comes out. If it's, you know, if next time, if you think that that's too much time, you can, you can change that time. Interesting things on here. Um, when it comes to vegetables, there are a couple different ways you can, I put the vegetables into the Instapot because it, they're all going to cook. They're, they're, you know, root vegetables. So they're, it's fine. They can cook longer, but if you have more delicate vegetables that you're putting into a soup, say I wanted to put spinach in here, I would not put it in with all these other vegetables. I would uh, wait until the end. I would put it on saute and put my other vegetables in. It will create a nice simmer. There are actually, there are three settings here. Um, you see less normal and more. So even when you're sauteing, you can do a, a low saute, a medium saute or a hot saute. So the medium one is, is usually where I stay. But the thing about the medium saute is that it makes a great rolling simmer. So if you're doing like a stew and you don't want your potatoes to get too mushy because potatoes will get a little mushy in here, you might want to do those after everything else is done. So you finish it off with your saute feature. So it's great. You've got one pot and you're just working the whole deal in the pot. Um, some of the benefits of the Instapot is that you often will use less liquid. So you preserve more of the nutrients in your vegetables and also the heat, uh, the the, it gets so hot that it kills more of the bacteria that could grow in, in food. Um, so those are some great things about the Instapot. And again, here's another, um, a slow cooker conversion versus Instapot conversion. What you can do for 10 hours on low in a slow cooker, you can do 30 minutes in an Instapot. Um, what you can do for four hours in a slow cooker, you can do in 12 minutes in an Instapot. So it really cuts the time. And here's stovetop. Two hours on the stove is 40 minutes in the Instapot. Um, let's see, 30 minutes on the stove is 10 minutes in the Instapot. And here's lowest pasta cook times. 12 minutes on the stove is four minutes in the Instapot. Um, and uh, so... I mean, it does, it saves a lot of time. Um, also, what I like about it is I don't have to watch the pot. I can put it in there, even if it's going to take pretty much the same amount of time. I don't have to watch the pot. I can just put it all in there, go about my business, do my next thing. The other feature that the Instapot has is once your food is done, if you look down here, there is a button that says keep warm. Now, once this pressurizes, goes up, comes down, once the timer goes down, um, it will just go to keep warm. So if you say you wanna go to, you know, you have to, I wouldn't advise you leaving this completely unattended in the house, but if you wanted to say, um, you know, somebody else was home, but you, you know, you just wanted to leave it and go out for, you know, you forgot something at the grocery store, you need to pop back out and get that. You can do that um, 
And this will just keep warm till you're ready. I can feel the lid getting high. Um, my pressure gauge isn't up yet, but I, I can feel the lid getting hot. The, so while this is doing its thing, I am going to pull out my air fryer to show you. Okay. This is one of my kids' absolute favorite appliances. Um, what I like about it is I have to move this just to pop back a little bit. You're really not supposed to move them once they start to pressurize, but it's not fully pressurized, so I moved it. Um, my stove is incredibly slow to warm, to heat up. Um, I have found that this, uh, this little air fryer warms up very quickly. And um, I get, you know, uh, the kids can make chicken nuggets for no time it's great for party foods or you know french fries or things that you buy in the freezer section which i wouldn't recommend you eating on a daily basis but there are but you can also do um homemade chicken nuggets or you can you can actually do some drying in here like herb drying you can dry out you know like apples and and things like that so there are a lot of different ways you can use your air fryer so i'm gonna need another plug so i'm gonna unplug this hopefully my battery won't die i will plug this in i will show you the magic of the air fryer so this air fryer was fairly inexpensive and I bought it because I read the reviews on Amazon and then everybody said it was awesome. It was super easy. This one's small and uh, this basket just pops out. Um, I wanted something that would be small and easy to manage. So, and easy to clean. So when I, I basically looked for easy to clean and I found this one. So it has the bottom. Um, this keeps the food from sitting on the bottom of the air fryer so the air can get all around it, like a trivet. And um, this, is, this is very easy to clean, this metal, this, uh, it's very easy. Um, so when you push this in, this thing goes around for a minute and then you can set your time or, or set your temperature. And then when you hit this again, you can set the number of minutes you want. So let me show you. I'm just going to take this out because it'll automatically go back to that setting when I put that in. I'm going to grab some chicken nuggets that the kids like to eat. I'm going to toss them in there. You don't even have to do a single layer. I wouldn't over stack it, but you really don't have to do a single layer. And then it goes around and then it just goes right back to my setting. And on the top of mine, it has different, um, different settings. Let's see. You want that to be about. 360. I thought it was going to go right back, but it didn't. So now it should start heating up and it starts doing its thing. You just have to leave it alone and it's really fast. So I put these in for four minutes. And we'll see four minutes, what four minutes can do. Um, what I got in here as well, a, I thought I did an air fryer. So let's talk about air fryer cook times. You can cook a chicken breast in an air fryer in 10 minutes at 400 degrees. Um, frozen onion wings are so good in the air fryer. Um, you can cook hot dogs, hamburgers, meatballs. You can put any, you know, I do like to, to heat up meat. I don't like heating up meat in the microwave. So if I have like a leftover hamburger and I want to make a hamburger out of it for lunch the next day, uh, I will put it in the air fryer. It doesn't really fry anything. You don't really add oil. All, it's basically a small convection oven. 
So it, it's got, it gets hot right away and it's fan, the fan spins every, you know, all that hot air around. So basically all it's doing is using hot air. Um, there are some things that if you were to cook, you might wanna add a little spray of oil. I use this olive oil spray. Um, some of the things that we had to do that for is, you know, we made these little donuts, little dope, they were little dough ball donuts and we had to spray them a little bit and put them in there. Um, we, if you were making homemade chicken nuggets, you would want to spray them before you put them in just to crisp them up. Um, so that is what you can do with that. And as you can see, my Instant Pot is still pressurizing. So it takes some time to pressurize, but once it gets there, it's very fast. And like I said, you don't have to babysit it. So that's a plus. Um, Let's see, this has all sorts of things, but you can also put vegetables in here like broccoli, cauliflower, um, potatoes. Oh, the best are um, hash browns. We'll do a little hash brown or French fries that you buy in the freezer section are really, really good in the Instapot as well. I mean, in the, in the air fryer. So air fryer, super easy, healthier than Fry deep frying, but most of the food you're making here is probably not going to be as healthy as the food that you make in your Instapot. So, um, so that is both of those appliances. Um, this one, the air fryer, you don't want to submerge in water, um, and you can clean the basket. I don't put it in the dishwasher, so. Um, that's nice to know about that. And uh, I sort of like my small appliances. I like my gadgets. And um, these two have really come in handy and saved me a lot of time. So um, my pressure gauge has just popped up. So it'll be like seven more minutes on this. And then I'll be ready to shred the chicken. Once I do that, I took uh, this Basmati that's oil and bag. Have you seen that? It's nice because it doesn't absorb too much of the liquid in here. So after this is done, I will put this on saute and put this in the soup base for about seven to 10 minutes until it's soft. And then it'll be dinner time. It'll be great. Easy peasy. Um, so I hope these, well, let's see what happens with our we got less than a minute to go on our air fryer. Oh, there it is. Again, let me show you what we got. So I wait until the air stops blowing. There are a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. You want to wait until the air stops blowing on this so you don't get a draft of hot air. And also never put your face over the Instapot valves and be very careful when you are releasing those valves. You can release your valve if you need to do a quick release with a spoon so that you don't get a blast of hot air. Um, so let's see. They are crunchy. They are hot. Um, little chicky nuggies there. You can see they're a little bit greasy, but they're ready to eat. Um, if I wanted them a little more crunchy, I could put them into the air fryer for another couple of minutes and they would be all ready to go. So that makes uh, quick lunches a little bit easier. And it has been really great sharing some of my appliance love with you. And I hope that you got something out of this. If you have any questions, you can contact me at the library. Uh, and I will be happy to answer them for you. Come in, get some books on air fryers in spots and uh, try some recipes on your own. So it's been great uh, giving you this information and uh, I hope to see you at the library soon. Bye-bye.